Well, good morning, everybody. We're going live for the Rock Revival Center. Just want to welcome you guys. We're here in Gig Harbor, Washington, and uh, we're so excited about what God is doing in the body of Christ. There's a purging going on. There's a purification of the bride that's happening. And so we welcome you to this prophetic watch. We're going to start by worshiping the Lord, but first let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you right now that not only are you here with us, not only are you for us in this hour, but you're about to break some strongholds across the nations of the earth. You're exposing what's hidden, what's in dark places, and you're bringing us into the glorious light that we find in you. So we ask God that you begin to shine, shine around the nations, Lord. Shine, Lord. We pray that you would shine in our hearts, Lord. And Lord, as we worship you together today, even from our homes, Lord, we ask that you would remove every, every point of conflict, every damage, every sin pattern, everything that's destructive, and that you would bring a reconstruction, a reorganization in the body of Christ. Not just in the church, but Lord, in the communities, Lord, there's people out there that don't know your love. They don't know your truth. And you're shaking the systems of the earth for such a time as this. You are removing the things that hinder. You're removing roadblocks and blockades that you did not set up. Lord, we know that the best thing we can do in this hour is to press into you, is to come to you with our concerns, come to you with our questions, come to you and receive revelation from your very heart. Lord, I thank you right now that you stir up the body of Christ. Stir up the body of Christ. Stir up the people who are offended by the church and refuse to be a part of your bride community. But you said you're coming back for a bride that's been made ready. Lord, we see that there's never been a more important time than right now to get right before you and to come together to worship you and to pray and to seek your face. We humble ourselves before you today, and we ask you, Lord, to have your way in our hearts. Have your way at this church. Have your way in the communities, Lord, that we represent. Have your way in our nation, God. Renew a right spirit in your people. Bring the focus back to you. Bring the clarity out of confusion, God. Bring. We pray that you bring the love, the healing balm of Gilead, the, the soundness of mind upon your people in this hour. And Lord, as we come together, even on this live broadcast, that we would seek you while you can be found. That we would pursue your heart for how you want us to respond. Thank you for the how-tos today in this prophetic watch. Thank you for the revelation that you revealed that we'll receive messages from heaven. Even in this time that we spend together live, we thank you that you're releasing the spirit of prophecy, that you're, that you're bringing people into the alignment for the assignment, that you're restoring, God, what's been lost, what's been damaged, what's been broken. That you're healing hearts, you're healing bodies. I say in Jesus' name that we bind the spirit of fear that you did not give us. And we loose the power of your love, agape love, and the soundness of mind. Those who watch this video, that they will be restored in understanding, that they will be filled with divine wisdom, that truth and hope will penetrate into the deep areas of the hearts and that you, God, will be lifted up high. Jesus, we thank you for being here with us today. Lord, we thank you that you have a good plan, that it's made, it's decided, and it's to prosper your people. But first, you must shake the shakable things that only unshakable things can remain. So Lord, we bless this time of worship. We bless your people. They'll be tuning in from around the nations of the earth. And Lord, we ask that this message would go out right now, supernaturally open up the airwaves and bring people into the fullness of who you are. Bring people into a revelation that you are here, that you've not forgotten them. You're with us and for us and that you're going to see this through to the end, which is a new beginning. And we thank you for the new beginning that starts today. We thank you, God, that we can press into you like never before, that we can really focus on what matters. 
Lord, we choose to tune out the news and the media just for this period of time. We don't need more information. We need your power that's released only in worship and in prayer. And in that alone, we'll see the destruction of the works of the devil. And we'll see the restoring of all that is good from your kingdom. Have your way among us. Have your way in our midst. And during this prophetic watch, I pray that people would have lives transformed, that people would come to salvation, that there be supernatural shares and likes, that family members that don't even like church will tune in today to this broadcast and be blessed, that revelation will pour out into their hearts, that those who are thirsty will drink and those who are hungry will eat of the words that come from you, the living water and the living bread. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome you guys to home church. We're doing home church today. Take the home, take the church back to the homes where the people are. And I just invite you to join in in this time of worship. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to lift up King Jesus. Let's do this together. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to have some fun together. And then I got a powerful prophetic message for for you that you're going to love. And just many many points in the how to, what to do in times like this. You will be blessed. Praise God. Let the King of my heart be the fountain where I love. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are
bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasures you love. As God, we come to lay ourselves, God.
Hallelujah. Hey, just want to welcome the online audience. Uh, we're going to continue to worship. Pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee or some tea or something to drink, and uh, kick your feet up and enjoy yourselves in your homes. I uh, just wanted to welcome you. This is really super uh, exciting what God is doing right now. Um, and when we're finished with worship, um, the theme, in case you didn't notice, is the prophetic watch. What is God saying right now about where we are as a people? What is God doing in the bride? What is He wanting to accomplish? What's His, his goal? What's the end game? Uh, you're going to find out. So stay tuned uh, for a powerful prophetic message on this prophetic watch. Let's continue to worship.
into the presence, into his presence, because there's pain in your heart, there's something in your heart that's just been hard and been hurt, you've been burdened with it. Give it to the Lord, lay it down at his feet. Let him come in and wash over you. Let him immerse you in his love and, and just partner with him and just get back into his presence. He will He will heal your heart. He will heal that broken place and that is just gripping your heart. If you're bound by fear of what's going on in the world, it's not your battle to fight, it's his. And if you would just posture yourself, posture your heart back to him, and not fight against other people or fight against yourself but, or the resistance, but just say, God, we need you. We need you like we never needed you before, but we want to enter into your presence. We yes. need you more than the blessing. We need you more than a miracle. We just need you. We need you. Yeah. And we need you so much, God, to just guide us, to lead us. But we need your presence. Yes. We need your presence, your tangible presence, God. Would you invite him into your heart, if that's you, that you just have had a hard time letting him back into your heart. You, you blame God for some circumstance or something didn't fall through, something didn't go your way or go the way you thought it would go. Would you just ask him right now to enter your heart and say, would you forgive me, God, for what I've made it? Would you forgive me, God, for blaming you for, for this, this pain, for this fear, what's going on, for the loss of finances, for, for whatever's going on in your family? And so, God, we just thank you, Jesus. We lift you up that you are our salvation. You are the one who loves us more than anything. And so, God, we just open our hearts to you to receive in Jesus' name. Yes.
just want
standing by with your guitar ready just in case we want to add a few more. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, um, John. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, how are you guys? Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the Rock Revival Center Online Church today. We're going to have some fun. Um, this is the prophetic watch. And so we're going to talk about what is the Lord saying to watch for? Uh, what does he want to adjust? We're even going to talk a little bit about some of the steps that we can be taking right now uh, prophetically that God wants to uh, to move us into. Here you go, Johnny. Boy, that's for you. Oh, no, no, leave that where it is. Yeah, leave that where it is. You don't have okay. to move it. Yeah, okay. no, just leave it right there. Okay. And, um, and so, yeah, so thank you, Jesus. For what you're doing in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for what you're saying in this hour. I personally have never been more excited about anything in my life than to know that God has caused us to be born for such a time as this. That we were literally put on the planet to see the greatest move of God in all of history. So let's pray and let's ask God to reveal revelation that will encourage and exhort and build up and lift up the body of Christ. John, if you just put it on your phone and then hand me your phone. I'm going to do this, yeah. So Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that even as we worship you in spirit and in truth, you begin to pour out your spirit on all flesh. That the antidote to COVID-19 is worship because nothing can interrupt when the flow of worship comes and saturates with your anointing and fills with your power a vessel that's yielded to you and so we declare and decree right now that if there's anyone who's sick among us that the spirit of the lord has come upon you that the spirit of the lord has come upon you he has anointed you to present the gospel which is news which is meant to be proclaimed the truth going forth and not returning void. The, the newness, the wholeness, the fullness of Christ is upon those who have received His Spirit and who have yielded and said, Yes, God. And so I want to invite you just to say yes to the Lord. Please just leave it um, I invite you right now to, uh, to yield to the Holy Spirit and to allow the Holy Spirit to do a work inside of you. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, I need you. Say, Jesus, I need you. Yeah, Jesus, I surrender to you. Jesus, I ask you to fill me. Right now, to overflowing with your Holy Spirit, baptize me in your passion and your fire and by your Holy Spirit. I receive it right now by faith. In Jesus' name, pray for your heart. Just say, heart, be healed. In Jesus' name. Heart, be healed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for healing my heart. Thank you, Lord, for restoring me to rightness and likeness that I would be just like you as your hands and as your feet on this earth as it is in heaven. I thank you in Jesus' name. How many people know that God is with you and He's for you? And for such a time as this, we're beginning to see the Spirit of the Lord pour out on all flesh across the earth. And He's beginning to shake those things that are shakable, that only unshakable things shall remain. So who's ready to see heaven on earth? Pouring out for such a time as this. Come on, you can raise your hand. You can share this post. You can like this post. Uh, some of you are watching from our church community. I noticed that some of you are watching from other countries. Uh, I just want to welcome you. I thank you for joining. I believe you're going to be so glad that you tuned in, that you watched this, because the Lord has given me some tremendous revelation as how we can respond. How uh, are we going to process and be a part of the solution for such a time as this, as God's uh, body. And so, Father, we just thank you. Can you open it up for me again? Father, we thank you right now that you're moving in our midst, that you're restoring families, that you're bringing home prodigals, that you're bringing marriages into health 
and deep restoration. Lord, that you're, you're uniting your body right now. That you're restoring those who are sick and oppressed of the devil. That you're delivering those who have been oppressed and discouraged. Lord, I ask right now that you would uh, supernaturally continue to make matches with people on the earth. That you're matchmaking. Lord, I thank you that you're providing supernaturally for your people while you're exposing idolatry. And Lord, what a blessing it is to know that you're doing this as a righteous, just, loving, and kind Father. We give you permission to interrupt the systems that are not built on your kingdom. We give you permission, God, to search our hearts and see if there be any error in our way. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen. Okay, so let's do our giving. Uh, I want to give you guys the convenient ways to give, and I'm just going to hold this up, and you, you're willing to, or if you're able to uh, read this on your screen, uh, these are the ways that you can give right now and partner with the mission and the ministry. So those are the ways you can give. I'm just putting it up here so you can see, and uh, if you can read it, then I'm, I'm so glad. I'm trying to hold it nice and still. Uh, if you want to sow a gift into the church right now and, uh, and battle the spirit called fear, the spirit of mammon and the spirit of lack, the best way to do that is just be generous. Just ask the Lord and then just do whatever he tells you. And I know some of you are saying, you know what? I don't have much, but I'm going to give. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter what I have. It matters what God is asking. And so I just want to encourage you to go ahead and go online and you can do text to give. You can see the numbers there on your screen. And uh, if you want a text to give, you might want to get a piece of paper and a pen and just write it down because I'm not going to hold it up here very long. But go ahead and, uh, and write that down. And, uh, and then go ahead and text to give while we're doing this. So, Father, we just bless the finances of your people. We know that by faith, we're going to have supernatural results because of the favor that's on us. That the favor and the flavor of heaven, that you are our supply and our help, in present time of need. And so, Lord, I pray with our tithes, with our offerings, as we bring them before you today, that, Lord, that you would do a miracle in the area of finances. For those who have needs right now, I pray every need to be met. We agree right now in faith that there's breakthrough finances that are coming upon the body of Christ. And, Lord, we thank you right now that your people are going to be the lenders and not the borrowers. That it's not about just canceling debt. It's about giving because you first gave to us. We want to give to you our seed. And we ask you to bring the rain and shine your light upon it. And cause there to be some 36, 60, and 100 fold return on what we invest in you in the kingdom of God that can never be lost. Lord, we thank you that when we give, we win. And that we ask that you would do a mighty miracle in the finances. Lord, we, we all have needs, but we're trusting you. And we give to you because you first gave to us. And we ask, God, that you just give us a number and we'll do it. We say yes. Come on, are you with me? Yeah, just follow the prompts there and, and uh, you can jot down that text to give. And then all you do is just go in there and send a text. It'll respond back. And then that's a secure way to give. Uh, and then if you want to send in something, there's also that option there. Uh, the chances of people doing it later if they don't take advantage of the moment is pretty slim so i would say jump on the 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 window there's a window open now where god will pour out favor uh, so follow through with this i just want to encourage you as you give you're going to destroy the spirit of fear and so let the spirit of fear get under your feet instead of being on your head and so i just decree and declare right now we will not eat our seed we will sow our seed and that lord you ask uh, you ask us to do this to show you our faith and to show you that we actually do trust you and then we ask that you would destroy any plan that the enemy had to try to cause our seed to be consumed by ourselves or our or or by the spirit of fear and we just bless god the finances of your people in jesus mighty name hallelujah okay so father i thank you right now that you give me these words i want to release them from your heart i want to release these words from your heart 
And Lord, I'm asking right now that your dunamis power would come upon your people. That every sickness and every disease in any person's family would be immediately healed, even now. We release your healing. We release your healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Okay, who's ready for this word? I'm excited about this. Okay, so there's a prophetic watch. I asked the Lord, what do you want to call this session, this, this Sunday morning? And he said, the prophetic watch. So, obviously, there's some prophecy here. Um, I believe this, that, that God is not at all surprised by anything that's going on. In fact, the Lord said all things will work together for good, just as we were singing together. But not only is this part of all, and by the way, I, I really don't believe God did this, right? He didn't do that. He let this happen. He allowed this to happen. He didn't do it. God comes to give life and life abundant. Now, we do know that there was plagues in days of old, if you read the Bible. And uh, what, what happened during plagues? What happened during famines? What revelation can we glean from these events of the days of old? Well, this is a new day, a new dawn, a new season of victory where the Lord's pushing the reset button. And he's exposing and destroying the works of the devil. He's actually causing there to be a separation between the goats and the sheep, the wheat and the tares. Why is he doing this? Well, because he's about to come back. That's why Jesus is about to return. Can you imagine if you could have been if you could have been? Well, I know you were planned, but I'm just saying if you could have planned your birthday, it, you couldn't have planned it better. If it was up to you, when you were born on the earth, there has never been a better time to be alive than right now. Can you imagine? looking up at the sky and seeing Jesus come back on that white horse, galloping across the sky, no matter where you are on the earth, and being here for his return. Can you imagine this? I believe we're going to see Jesus. Most of us are going to see Jesus return in our lifetime. I really believe it. And we know that he's been saying, behold, I'm coming soon, right? For many, many years, for years and years and years, thousands of years 2,000 years, Jesus has been, behold, I'm coming soon. Well, it's like, he's not here yet. But these things that we're seeing now on the earth had to take place before he could return. The gospel has to be preached to every living creature. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars, the Lord said in the, in the book of Revelation. There would be a, following, a falling away. Uh, there would be people who you know, would come under the testing and they'd say, you know, forget it. It's easier just to be worldly than to be a Christian. Now, I know, obviously, it's better to be on the winning side. It doesn't make any sense to be on the losing side. And so these are some things that the Lord has spoken that he wants to uh, make mention of right now during this prophetic watch. So I'm going to share uh, what, what I heard him say. <laughs> I got a lot here. Okay, prophetic watch. The Lord said, I'm, I'm setting up prophetic watches in this hour. I am shaking what is shakable so that only unshakable things can remain. I am restructuring the church that has my name and needs my heart. Wow. This is a global Passover, an economic tipping point of paramount importance. I am ushering in the next level of glory in this hour for houses of prayer. Wow, this is amazing because we're talking about Jesus originally. You remember the scripture that says, My house will be a house of prayer. Well, we need prayer, right? I love just getting into times of intercession and prayer where you just really focus and hone in on what is God saying. Begin to pray what God is revealing in Revelation that he begins to put it in your heart what's in his heart. And as you adopt the mind of Christ, your mind is renewed. You've been reading the Word, the Bible, and you're, you're, you're reading through the words. And the Lord is speaking and He's saying, this is what I want. And you begin to read and you, you begin to get saturated and filled with hope and fire and zeal. And, and then all of a sudden, you, you feel so protected and shielded because of faith. Hearing and hearing by the Word. The Word is written and spoken. Jesus is the living letter. He's alive. He's not dead. And he's not surprised. And he's not worried. I love this. If your king, the king of kings, is not worried, then why should we be worried about anything? He, who can, by, by worry, add a single cupid to his stature? Right? 
So what is the Lord doing? Well, the Lord's saying, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Like the song said, right? Remember that song? Don't worry. Be happy. Remember that? <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I just believe God's saying, get ready. The revolution has begun. I'm not returning until I put things in order. That's what he's saying. So there's a tipping point of paramount importance. The Lord said, I'm ushering in the next level glory in this hour for houses of prayer. Why does he want the houses to be houses of prayer? Because remember the theme scripture for our event, Awaken the Planet? When I said, Lord, what do you want to do? He said, I want to awaken the planet. He said, book the Tacoma Dome for this date. And I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want to awaken the planet. I said, what do you want to call it? He said, I just told you. And I laughed because it was funny, right? And he showed me revive means to make new. Awaken means to wake up. He said, I'm, I'm awakening or waking up my bride to the reality. The reality. Something real, tangible. That I make all things new. So we've got revival that burns, right? We've got the restoration of the fire of God. That There's people preaching on the fire of God. Why do we need the fire of God? Because we've got to burn up the chaff. And that's the form that denies the power. The chaff is the fleshiness of our society, the, the focusing on the wrong things, the glamour and, and who's who in the zoo and you know what Hollywood did this and that, that and the other thing. And the Lord's like, no, no, no. Come back to me, right? Return to me and I'll return to you. How must I return? Well, this is, that's about heart. The, the giving is about having the right heart. And a right heart is going to want to do the will of God, is going to want to give up your whole life. And in our finance, obviously, God usually is, that's the last thing God gets a hold of. But he gets people's attention when he starts messing with the financial systems. Well, we're seeing a messing of the financial systems right now. This is a great opportunity to witness God saying, I want your heart. Why? Because where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So the Lord's saying, whatever you value, whatever you focus on, whatever you're really pursuing, for a lot of people, it's their career. Uh, for a lot of people, it's their job. For a lot of people, it's the number one focus is not the Lord seek his face. It's what can God do for me and how can I use the scripture to benefit myself? And the Lord's like, no, that's not it. So he's bringing houses of prayer. What's prayer? Prayer is communication where we get the word commune. Abide in me, I'll abide in you. We pursue, we seek first the kingdom of God, not the world that's failing. We seek first the kingdom of God. Second Chronicles 7, 14, if you do something, I'll do something. If my people who are called by my name, that's obviously Christian. Christ, it means follower of Christ, not just fish sticker. If my people, the Christians, would humble themselves. Why is it important to humble ourselves? Because you can't pray, you can't talk to God, if you don't first humble yourself. And that's the reason so many people have a hard time with prayer. Well, I'm praying, but I don't see Him. I'm praying, but I'm not hearing Him. I'm praying, but what is it? And, and what happens, though, is as you're praying, as you're pressing in, and I don't know if you've ever noticed, when you start praying in a prayer meeting, people want to talk about all their drama. It's really hard to get going. It's like you're sputtering. People are going, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Instead of like, Jesus, right? Why is it like that? It's because... The flesh doesn't die easy. So God allows for circumstances that are temporary so that he can begin to present the need for himself as the sailor, Savior. So the vision I got, I saw the mercy ships going into uh, New York. I saw uh, that comfort ship. was What a massive ship. It's amazing. You know, the YWAM organization has been impacting the nations of the earth through missions for, for so many years. I love YWAM. But here's the thing. I saw that ship coming in. And the vision that I got was all of these lifeboats were on the ship, but they weren't valued because they weren't needed. And then I saw the life preservers, you know those little round things that they throw off the ship if somebody's drowning? And no one saw the need for them. Look back at the Titanic before it sunk. They actually took lifeboats off the Titanic and called it the unsinkable ship, Pride. It was the most beautiful ship at that time. The most glorious ship. 
And the people who were on the ship paid a lot of money, and they were proud of it. I'm, sh I'm sailing the seas on the Titanic, the unsinkable ship. And what, is the, what happens? Iceberg, dead ahead. Well, guys, this is like our spiritual iceberg. The Lord's saying, there's no need for a lifeboat unless you recognize that your life needs saving. There's no need for a life preserver or even a vest if you're not drowning. And so what is the Lord doing? He's allowing. He didn't do it. He didn't make it happen. He didn't start a virus. He comes to heal sickness and disease. He said, by my stripes, you're healed. So what is he doing? He's allowing an opportunity for the whole planet to recognize their need to be saved. Why? Because he's the Savior, and people don't value the Savior unless they need saving. Come on, somebody. Jesus, the Savior, saves. Jesus, the healer, heals. Jesus, the Messiah, the one who not just was, but who is and is to come, is reaching out his hand and saying, you who are drowning, will you let me rescue you? You who need help, will you let me be the help that you need in present time of need? You who in your arrogance thought you were your provider, will you let me be your provider, says the Lord? Will you let me be the Lord of all and not just come to church and think you're good, that you clocked in and clocked out, that you showed up 50 weeks out of the 52 weeks in a year. This isn't about perfect attendance in a building. This is about perfect surrender to a living king that wants to use us as his earthly vessels. To bring heaven to earth is the goal. That's the king's desire in his domain. He's given us power and authority and dominion to literally shift the nations with his truth and love. And he's bringing us back to, if you're going to represent me, then I must purge you. I must purify you. I must see that you value who I am and not what I can do for you alone. Yes, there's benefits in being a sold out on fire, contagious believer, a believing believer. Yes, there's an advantage there. Yes, it's worth it. Yes, it's awesome. But he doesn't want us to pursue him for what he can do for us. He wants us to pursue him for who he is to us. Amen? Come on, somebody, share this post. It's not going to share itself. And so those of you who are watching, share the post. Tag somebody who needs this message because it's about to get really good. Are you ready? Come on, Jesus. I love God. He is so good. I mean, he's just watching us in this prophetic watch. Not only is he watching us, but he's saying, taste and see. Taste is to experience. To see is to perceive. Will you look ahead at the thing that I'm perfecting you for? Because it's always about what this is for. What am I supposed to be learning right now? What adjustments in my life do I need to make? What needs to be my mindset to be like the mind of Christ, which is in us? If the hope of glory is in me, am I going to value the presence? Am I going to value when it manifests, which is the glory. The glory of God is the manifested presence of God. There's never been more of a need for the presence of God than ever. You want to shut down any sickness and any disease, any attack of the enemy, you got to learn how to navigate in the glory. And when the glory of God comes, things get put in order. When the glory of God comes, it's like he's just present. Oh my goodness, I'm satisfied in the presence. I can't help but recognize that the most valuable thing in my life is him alone and it's not in what he can bring to me or what he can do through me or how i can be recognized it's about jesus being lifted as the messiah jesus as the one who's returning for a bride that's been made ready and he's watching for the pure at heart those who have innocent motives that just want to do the will of god will be raised up in this hour. And those who have been speaking out of a different spirit, you're going to start noticing that they're being silenced. Because it's God's will that those who represent Him, that have His heart, represent Him correctly. Or there's confusion. People in the world that are dying need to see that the Christians are shining and not worried. That if the Christians are fearful... 
Why would the dying world, who's governed by a system of fear and addiction, why would they turn to the believer for the truth to be spoken in love, to deliver them from fear, if they don't see the love, if they don't see the truth, if they don't see that the light is on? So we have an opportunity in this present moment to represent and to represent who God really is in His true form. That he's loving, that he's kind, that he's good, that he's not surprised by anything, that he has a plan and it's going to work out for good, that he's going to do something exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think, that it's better than we think, that this turbulence, this shaking up of the nations, this removal of demonic systems and structures from the government all the way down to the schoolhouse, we're beginning to see the shaking go forth. I know this because people can't really go to school right now. People aren't really able to go to church for the most part. People aren't able to go. I was able to go to the store. I was surprised that the stores are open and the churches are closed. It ought not be. And I know there's people who have been bold about standing out and standing against what is trying to stop the church. But the enemy's been trying to do that since the beginning. The Lord is saying, you're my church. You're my church house. You are the temple of my Holy Spirit. Now, more than ever, it's time to speak out about the truth in love. It's time to speak out about the power of God. It's time to not hide our miracle story, but to proclaim what God has done. It's time to start saying God is in control, and He knows exactly what He's doing, and you've been chosen for such a time as this. Will you say yes to Him? Will you see this as an opportunity to get right with God, to surrender, to confess your sin, to say, Lord, I don't want to do it without you. I don't want to do it on my own. I don't want to do it my way. I'm not going to run this church like it's mine. I'm going to do your will in the land. I'm going to do your plan and not my own. And I hope this is speaking to some of you because the Lord is looking for vessels just like yourselves, that he can say, you know what, I can see this one's in surrender. Now I can surround. Full surrender, full surrounding. Full surrounding, full anointing. Full anointing, full power to break yokes of bondage to sin. First, make sure there's no beam or pole in your own eye. So you can see clearly to help remove the speck from another. We have to search our heart in this hour and be sure that there's no error in our way. What am I doing when no one else is looking? That matters to God. Some of you want to be promoted, and the Lord's saying, you want to be promoted? Then I need you to first humble yourself and actually talk to me. And not just pastors that are talking to God before audiences. I'm talking about you and Him in the secret place, having a heart that's right before the Lord, saying, you, God, are my refuge. You are my rescuer. You are my help in time of need. You are my prince of peace. You are the king of kings. I yield to you and to your spirit. Have your way in me. If that's your heart, if that's your will, oh, there's no limit to what God can do through a vessel that's yielded. Oh, there's no limit to what God can do to sweep a nation with his healing hand. There's no doubt God wants to do it. He just needs enough of us to start standing up for what is right, for start speaking out about what is true, to not come under the oppressive state of a hopeless generation. Instead, God bringing fire through us to let them be free and liberated by His truth and by His love. When He died on that cross, He didn't do it for no reason. He saw you and He saw me and He went ahead and He, and he took all the sin and all the effects of sin. The wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. And He became our sin so we would be able to become His righteousness. And He paid for our, our sin. And He said, you know what? I don't care what you've done. It's worth it for me to go to the cross because I can set you free from yourself from death, from hell, from the grave, from the earth curse system, and give you life and blessing and prosper you even in the midst of times of famine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. So God wants to use you because He's chosen you since the foundation of the earth. He went ahead and He pursued His own heart to bring restoration and liberty to the people. So we thank you for this, God. We thank you for this. He's turning over the tables of those who are holding wrong motives toward people. People are precious to God. People 
are so precious to God. Do you know how you love God well? Love the Lord, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The greatest commandment. Now you sum up the law and the prophets and, and just this. Love the Lord, love your neighbor, love yourself. You can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. And you can't love yourself unless you know how much God loves you. But once you know God loves you, he's crazy about you. I don't mean crazy in a bad way. He's crazy in a good way. I don't like the word crazy, by the way. That's not a good word. If you go look up the definition, people say, Oh, dude, that's sick, man. Sick is bad. Oh, man, that's so bad. That actually means bad. It doesn't mean good. People are saying bad is good and good is bad. It's twisted. People are saying, Oh, dude, it's crazy. Crazy awesome? You mean crazy awesome? Yeah, yeah, crazy awesome. Well, actually, crazy is a crazy word. It's not a good word. It's, it's, if you look up the definition, people who say crazy, yeah, it's not a good word. We need to start speaking from life. We need to start, start recognizing that the power of our words is literally going to shape the direction of our whole life, our whole family. Our business can be shaped. Our outcomes can be shaped. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we can shape our government by speaking out to what is not just. That political spirit, it's not okay. We need to know what the word says and how to address the political spirit. People who are, you know, they're saying that they got these breakouts and that somebody died from COVID-19 and, and it's not true. They died because a hammer hit them when they hit a bench and, and then they're calling it COVID-19. Why would they want to fear people? Why would they want to do this? Because there's a political agenda. See, they'll, they'll send support where there's, more, where there's more numbers, where more people have been affected. So they try to create these leaders of certain places. They'll try to create higher numbers and they'll try to create fear that causes there to be a perpetuation of the very thing God wants to stop in its tracks. I'm here to tell you, you can stop COVID-19 by believing that the Lord has a better word. His blood speaks a better word, that you don't need to fear anything. Be in faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. So we need faith. And the only way to get faith, you can't circumvent faith. You can't piggyback on someone else's faith. You need your own faith in this hour. And the only way I know to get that is to listen to God. You listen to God. You listen to God. You listen to God. You hear God. You listen for God and you pursue God and then you get answers. The Lord said, seek me and you'll find me. His sheep hear his voice, but they're not going to hear his voice if they're not listening. Even if you're his sheep and you don't want to listen, you don't hear. You can't hear when you're not listening. So the Lord says, shh, listen. No, 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 turn off the news. No, 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 turn off all the noise and just listen to me. Listen to me. Come to me, you who are burdened and weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you will find rest, perfect shalom, harmony and peace, producing joy, bringing power. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We get dunamis, dynamite, explosive power when we believe God and when we listen to his voice. This is the other thing the Lord said, I'm unifying my bride while I'm purifying her. Why is that important? Because unity can't happen without some iron sharpening iron, without some clashing of the sword. Last year was kind of prophetically in the Jewish calendar. If you look back, it was the clashing of the swords. Why is that good? Well, because iron sharpens iron. We need to be able to have productive conversations without condemning one another. Instead of me saying, well, you shouldn't think that way and I'm right and then trying to argue your point. Why would we do that? That's not productive. You don't have to have an argument, but you can have a, a discussion because discussions, it's just like judging to evaluate versus judging to condemn. If I condemn a person, I shut off the possibility of learning or, or bringing a teaching. I want to be able to speak what God is saying and be quiet when God's saying, I need you to listen. So listen to this. The Lord said, I'm purifying my people and I'm shaking faulty systems. I'm unifying while I'm purifying. That's what the Lord is doing right now. On this prophetic watch, I declare, and you can quote me, that the Lord is unifying the body, that He's unifying the nations. He's going to start unifying while He's purifying. And the way you can allow yourself to become purified is submit yourself fully and completely, thought by thought, moment by moment, to the One who would give you everything. And know that your source is not the government. 
that your source is not your mom or your dad. That your source is not your job. That your source is not your church. The church can't build a relationship between you and Jesus, not like you and Jesus being alone by yourselves. And so what is the Lord doing? He's saying, come back to me. Come back to me and sit at my feet and listen for my words, and I will give you the oracles of heaven. I will give you downloads. I will give you revelation. I'll give you dreams and visions. I'll give you impartations and giftings, mantles and capacities. I'll give you strength, says the Lord. But you must allow yourself to embrace what has come upon you. Not to embrace it to be okay with it, but to embrace the effect of what will happen is if you adjust to what has happened and you make the necessary changes. And some of us need to repent. We need to say, you know what? I thought this was okay to look like the world. I thought this was okay to be a lukewarm believer. But I realized that's not okay. I need to be all in or I'm not in at all. I need to be all the way into the light or I'm living in compromise. I need to be all for God or I'm not for God at all. And this isn't about a Republican or Democratic party. The Republicans can't save you and the Democrats can't save you. And there's error on both sides. I'm Republican. But I'm just here to say Jesus is neither Democrat nor Republican. Jesus is not here to win a political battle. Uh, there was, I heard a pastor was saying this morning, you know, he was saying, uh, you know, somebody came up to him and said to him, you know, uh, you're just nothing more than a politician because he was talking about things. He was talking about the killing of, of babies, which is called the shedding of innocent blood. He was talking about the need to bring the Bible back into the schools. Why we take the Bible out of schools? Now he can't even go to school. And he's like, he's bringing up issues that this man, this pastor said to him. Pastor to pastor, you are just nothing more than a politician. And this pastor said to the pastor who was accusing him of being a politician as he shared these needed, necessary uh, topics that need to be discussed by the church and by those who don't even go to church. And you know what that pastor said? You're nothing more than a politician. He goes, well, well, tell me something. Do you let the Holy Spirit fully move in your church meetings? And that pastor said, well, no, I don't. And he said, well, why don't you allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants in your meetings? And the said, he said, because I don't, want to lose, I don't want to lose the audience. I don't want, I don't want to lose the church. And people, if we did that, they, they wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to contain it. It would just it would be out of control. And, and, and he said, so what you're saying then is you made a decision to not allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in your meetings because of the people, which is, this, is, is the fear of man. And he said, well, I never really thought of it that way. And he said, well, as you're accusing me of being a politician, my friend, I would like to tell you that you're more political than I am because you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to move in your meetings. And the Holy Spirit is the one who told me I'm supposed to talk about these issues that are not being talked about. While you're worried about political correctness, I'm concerned about doing what God has called me to do. And that's why I brought those topics up today. And it was amazing. And that pastor realized that he was worried about losing a popularity contest. This is the bedrock of the political spirit. We need, to, we need to get this political spirit out of the church. And we need the church to start rising up and being who we are supposed to be, the glorious bride of Christ, bringing the truth and love, delivering the hope and the healing of the nations. Come on! Isn't that the truth? I'm excited about what's happening. You know why I'm excited? I'm not excited about sickness. I'm not excited about death. I'm not excited about destruction. I'm not excited about not being able to come together and lay hands on people at church. None of that's exciting to me. But what I'm excited about is the hope that I find in the promises of God. The hope that I find that God is not surprised. He's not worried. He's not fearful. He's not discouraged or downcast. He knows exactly what he's doing for such a time as this. He's calling a, a people who will go all in. A people who will be on fire. A people who will go after the gospel of the kingdom instead of just the gospel of salvation. Salvation is say a prayer and you're good and then maybe someday you get to heaven. Gospel of the kingdom is the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came teaching and preaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Job the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why was it so important to bring the gospel of the kingdom and not the gospel of salvation? Because he wasn't trying to get us on a cruise ship and join a country club for religious fat cats and then begin to appeal to the most generous giver. No, Jesus is looking 
to purify hearts and create an opportunity for people to at last start relying on themselves. I'm my own provider instead of God. God is my, my source. God is my provider. I don't provide for me. You provide for me. Therefore, I'm not afraid that I won't have enough because I'm confident that the Lord will bless me in any circumstance. No matter what, I'm blessed. We need to have this mind, this mind of Christ that, that is in us that have believed, that, that is in us that we've received the gift of salvation. And we need to get to a place as God's people that we will go to the secret place and receive the revelation of God so we can be shielded by faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need Jesus in this hour, and he is the solution. He's the Savior who saves. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. He's the blessor or the giver of the blessing. He's the restorer of the broken. He's the Savior of the lost. He's the healer of the oppressed. He's the mender of the brokenhearted. He will give rain to those who have crops in the ground. He will send shine light on you that you will be a reflector of the brilliance of His glory. And He's not surprised by anything that's going on in the world systems that are failing and crumbling before our, our feet that were built on sand instead of the rock who is Jesus, the salvation source. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, I'm turning over the tables of those who are holding wrong motives toward my people. People are precious to God. They are not commodities. We are not herding cattle, pastors. How many head are you running, they ask me. How many head are you running there, Nathan? As if my success has anything to do with how many butts are in the seats. It has nothing to do with how many people came to the service. It has nothing to do with how many likes and shares I got on my Facebook. It doesn't matter how many followers I have. What matters is, did I, did you do the will of God for you in this hour? You will give an account for every word that you've spoken. How about if we begin to speak the truth? How about if we, the bride, begin to rise up and speak about the hope of Christ, the only hope of glory in the earth? It's not going to be the government's bailout that's going to put you in order. It's Christ the King, and He's the King of all the kings, in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! He told me, I'm shaking faulty systems right now. I'm shaking faulty systems. People putting money in the stock market and believing for gains. And all of a sudden, the bottom falls out. What am I going to do? Well, hopefully it's turned to Jesus. Yeah, but I don't have what I used to have. Well, praise the Lord. You're not self-reliant. And you're being given an opportunity to be God-dependent for the first time ever. Yeah, but how am I going to provide for myself? Oh, since when are you your own provider? Last I checked, Jesus is my source. Jesus is life. Jesus is door. Jesus is the way. Jesus is protection. Jesus is my strong tower, my place of refuge. He's my help in present time of tea. He brings me the comforter, which is his spirit living in me. And everything I need is found in him. That's why we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things get added to us Besides, if we got one thing right, and it was just this one thing, seek first the kingdom of God. Knock and keep knocking. Pursue God, and you will be resisting the devil. And you can't lose a battle that's won. The healer heals, and the Savior saves. By his stripes, I'm already healed. I'm not worried about getting a virus. I didn't put a mask on not once. Why not? Because my confidence is not in a mask. My confidence is in the Lord. Now, if you feel led to put on a mask and walk around town and not touch everybody, I get it. I'm just saying, I believe in my own personal convictions that I'm fully shielded. Why? Because I've been listening to the Lord. And my shield that has been built around me, the shield of Christ, formed by His own voice, has protected me inside of Himself. And as I abide, as you abide, abide in Him and He will abide in you. When you've got King uh, Jesus living inside you and you've yielded to him. Every stronghold shall be broken. Every chain that is causing the people to be bound will be exposed. And he'll give us an opportunity to shatter with him every chain. Nothing can prevent you from the plan and the purpose of God when you're yielded as a vessel. So we must yield to the Lord. He's shaking faulty systems. Oh, I'm so glad we don't have a, a huge church and a huge budget right now. We prayed for a building. Lord, we need a building for our church. Oh, God. And the Lord's like, oh, I've already chosen it. I'm going to give it to you, and it'll be debt-free, and that's all great. But I'm really glad he didn't do it last year. 
Because right now we'd be fretting. How are we going to pay this bill? It'd be even more pressure than right now. I'm enjoying this, actually. I'm enjoying this season. Why? Because I'm getting more time with the Lord. I'm getting more time without the interruptions and the, dist the distractions and, and thinking about all the destruction in the world isn't going to help the world. But if I get a revelation from the heart of God, then I can bring that truth and love to a dying world that desperately needs the life preserver. There's a lifeboat for you and your family. But God is saying, unless the ship looks like it's going to sink, unless the system looks like it's going to fall apart, unless your source of income gets interrupted, unless you lose that job that you made an idol, unless you lose the, the impact of that ministry uh, for just a period of time, unless that gets interrupted, that pattern, that cycle, then you won't see that I'm the Lord who saves. How can we recognize the Savior if we never even need to be saved? The best way to get people saved is to first talk about that hell is real. Because you know what? Hell is real. God showed it to me. I, sh I saw heaven. He took me through heaven by way of the Spirit, and I was amazed. I had so much fun seeing heaven, flying around heaven, seeing the crystal sea. He showed me my house. I was so excited to see what he showed me. It was like in the body, out of the body. I do not know. All I know is I saw heaven, and it is so beautiful, and it is so real, and the time is getting near that we're going to have to choose. Everyone gets to choose heaven or hell, life or death light or darkness, truth or lies. We get to choose this day who will serve. Tomorrow's not guaranteed anybody, but today, the Lord said, today is the day of salvation. We need saving. And the Savior's reaching out His hand. His outstretched arm is upon you right now and saying, will you let me bring you out of that mindset. Will you let me bring you out of that addiction? Will you let me restore that company? Restore on the right foundation that family, that marriage, those children. Will you let me be Lord of all in you? So he's shaking faulty systems. This is what he's doing. He's revealing himself as the healer, as the savior, as the miracle worker, as the provider, as your help in present time of need. And there's never been a more strategic, beautiful moment in all of history than right now, friends. Than right now, Peter. Than right now, Linda. Than right now, Rob. Ha! God is here. He's with us. He's for us. Who could be against us that matters? And no sickness, no disease can come nigh your dwelling place. Only if the blood of Jesus is upon your doorpost. If you've said yes to God. If you've said yes, Jesus, you are my Savior. And then the, the Lamb, the Lamb who was slain for the sins of the world, who rose again on the third day to conquer sickness, disease, death, hell, and the grave. On that cross, when he said, it is finished. It literally was paid for in advance. And some of us, even after 150,000 messages, still don't believe the truth of the blood speaks a better word. The blood speaks a better word than your doctor report. The blood speaks a better word than the test that may or may not worked out for you. The blood speaks a better word than, oh, what if I get it? What if it happens to me? What if something happens? Will somebody die? Well, listen, somebody died before the coronavirus was ever mentioned. People were already getting sick. People were already going through issues with health problems or challenges financially. All these problems existed before COVID-19. But I present to you, friends, that what if this turbulence, what if this talk in the earth isn't even about what it's being talked about? What if it's not even about what's being presented? What if it's not even about any of this stuff that we're seeing? But what if it's about one thing? Will you seek first the kingdom of God? Will you let the rescuer rescue you? Will you recognize your need for him so at last you will surrender to him? Will you allow him to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords in you? And not just like the idea of a family member that loves God and trusts God. And then when you need prayer, you call them and say, hey, can you pray for me? How about if you pray for you? How about if you pray for your family? How about if you begin to pray for your friends? How about if you carve out some time, especially now, to be an intercessor? Some of you have said, well, that's not my job. That's the work of the intercessor. Well, guess what? When the Bible said, if my people will humble themselves and pray, in there, when it said, my people, we are the people. We the people. We the people must begin to pray. And some of you won't tap into that deeper level of glory until you fast. You must deny yourself. 
deny yourself. Don't just eat fast. Oh, it'll be all right, honey. Bring me my wife, Peter. I'm going to go out and play some golf. You know? <laughs> it sounds like Clinton. <laughs> That's it. I did not sleep with that woman. I did not have sexual relations with Mess Lewinsky. Remember that? It was crazy. It was a disgrace. Everything done in secret will be laid bare before the one whom we must give an account. He finally confessed because there was so much evidence that proved that he was lying through his teeth. We can't put our trust in politicians. I love President Trump. I love uh, Mike Pence. I don't think they're perfect. I'm not perfect, but I love these guys. God put them in place. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for those leading the nation. You know how hard this is? Trump would have been much happier not being the president right now, I promise. So at least we can begin to support him and support the First Lady and support Mike Pence and his family and all the, the kids that are serving the nation. We need to support them because the truth is, they don't want this. They don't want to be even in office. They're doing it for us. People don't know it. They're in office because they're trying to do what they feel called to do, just like hopefully you're doing. So let's not be critics. But instead of accusing people to condemn them, let's evaluate kind of judge. Let's judge not to accuse, not to condemn, but let's judge to evaluate. Rightly dividing the word of truth and saying, you know what? I'm, I'm imperfect too. You can admit that. I'm imperfect too. I don't have it all together. Well, you know, I heard uh, Pastor Nathan's not perfect. Yeah, he said so the other day from the pulpit. I can't go to that church. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Listen, I don't even care if you come to my church because to me, it's not about the church that I am leading. It's about the kingdom of God. I've sent more people into the harvest than we have butts and seats. So if you ask me how many herd of cattle I'm running, I'm not going to be able to tell you because I don't know who's who in the zoo. I don't even know who's going to come. I don't even know who's watching now. The screen's a little too far away to see your names. i got to look in real close to figure out who's with me. See what I'm saying? Jesus is like, here, how about if you, it's not about that. How about if you just do what I'm asking you to do? Yeah, but they, they said this, and he, they said this. People called me the other day. Well, they said this, and they said, wait a minute, who's they? Well, you know, people. Well, people who? Like who? What people? And that, that woman could not tell me who. She didn't even know who. Folks, please, don't, don't perpetuate the problem by grabbing on to just random propaganda and then parroting it out as if the revelation came from you or if somehow you heard something that could be good and, and you start speaking. And that's what I don't like about the prophetic community. Right now what's bothering me is people are listening to other prophets and they're saying what other prophets are saying instead of just saying, God, what do you want to say? I'm giving you something that God spoke to me directly. I'd much rather tell you what God's telling me instead of coming up with some creative way to build my own name. I could care less if you like me. I could care less if you know my name. I'm just serious, being serious, being real. I love God with all my heart. I want to do the will of God as a man of God. I want to pursue God's kingdom and his righteousness so all the other things will just work out. And I want to see the healer do what he does best. He heals. I can't heal anyone. I've seen, yes, thousands of people get healed uh, over the course of my ministry over the last several years. I've seen thousands of people. I witnessed them. Miracles, 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 miracles are about to come back to the church. I've seen people coming out of wheelchairs, just one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, years in the wheelchair, and now they can walk. But I can't take credit for any of it because I'm not the healer. I did the praying. Yes, I believed. I had a part to play, but how could I take credit for doing that? I'm not the one who does that, and I can't take credit for if it didn't work either. And I can't tell you how many times I tried to see somebody get restored. I prayed for them, and it didn't happen like I thought it would. But God is sovereign, but he heals today. The healer heals. How dare we, as leaders in the church, tone down the Holy Spirit and not allow him, the honored guest at the party, to not have his party his way. Jesus wants to be the leader. Jesus wants to lead every mountain in our society. Jesus wants to be the focus of the source of truth. He's not a truth. He's the truth. He's the source of our strength. He's the source of our life. Billy Graham was packing out the stadium. What was Billy Graham doing? He was preaching the word. And some pastors I know... They're like, well, no, I don't want to bring a bunch of scripture. I'm just going to bring the miracles. Or they'll say, 
Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to quote a bunch of scriptures. Some people don't know those scriptures, and I don't want to confuse them. Let's just make it real seeker sensitive and just tone it down, brother. Tone it down, brother. Well, we want to avoid anything weird at our church because, you know, our denomination believes. Well, let me tell you something. That's being exposed and expelled and the Lord shining his light on whatever doesn't have his heart. He is the miracle worker. He wants miracles. He wants miracles and signs and wonders to follow those who believe. It's not okay to tone it down and God stamp it when it's not even the Holy Ghost. And so we need to let... God have our meetings. We need to recognize he's the leader, that we're the followers of Christ, that we follow him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That just means if I do something that's Christ, follow that example. If I'm representing Christ in that moment, follow that. But he's not saying follow everything that's in me that's not Christ, whatever the thorn in his side. I don't, he didn't say follow my thorn. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm doing something that's Christ-like and you adhere to that, you will be blessed in the same way with the truth of the revelation that releases the empowerment for you to be all you can be in Christ. He's raising up an army right now. In our midst, he's destroying the works of the devil and he's delivering life and life abundant. People are walking into a whole new level of discernment as God releases his strategy across the earth. So he's revealing himself as the healer, the savior, the miracle worker, and the provider. And then here's, I'll finish with this prophetic watch word. And uh, if you like the message, please share it. If you're not following the Awaken the Planet, find the Awaken the Planet Facebook. We're going to be doing another event in the Tacoma Dome. I'd love to have you guys be a part of it. If you're just tuning in now and you haven't had a chance to sow and you would like to sow a seed into the ministry, uh, there is a text to give option. And I'll have, uh, John, if you could pull up the text to give option, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I don't remember offhand, but if you pull up the text to give slide, and then I'll, uh, what's that? It goes backwards when you put it up. Oh, it does? Okay, Here, here's the, if you want to do text to give, guys, I'm going to give you the number. Uh, you just text the word give. So in your phone, uh, you just, like you're going to dial a number. And then in the text, like if you were going to text somebody, you just pull up your little text button there. And, uh, and all you got to do is just, is just enter the word give and then text that number. Uh, and then it should respond back to you. So then, um, then you just put in the amount, just enter the amount that you would like to give. And uh, whatever amount you're donating. And then uh, you're going to text that give. So if it's give 50 or if it's give 100 or if it's give 1,000, whatever the number and then you text it to this number here. If you want, you can write it down if, it, if it's easier for you. Uh, but I would suggest just do it while you're thinking of it. Uh, the number that you text is 888-962-3901. Again, that number is 888-962-3901. And you can text that number. And the, the, those of you who are, are giving now online, thank you so much. It, it actually allows us to be able to do what we do, and it really empowers us. I know a lot of churches and believe in God for miracles as well. Um, I, for some reason, I, I don't feel worried at all about anything. And I just believe that it's the faith that's coming by hearing and hearing by the Word. And so I want to encourage you, even after this broadcast is over, Go spend time going after the heart of God. Go pursue God while he can be found. Uh, seek the Lord. And don't worry about resisting the devil. If you seek the Lord, you'll automatically resist the devil. And the devil flees if he sees you pursuing God. He'll try to keep you from doing what God is asking. But if you'll constantly remain in that place of abiding and have the heart of God, you'll yield to him. And then through you, he'll bring rivers of living water. Uh, rivers of financial blessing will come to you. Um, I really believe that. God wants to, he wants to transfer the wealth right now from the wicked to the righteous. So be prepared in faith and showing faith by exercising it, the faith that you have. And God will increase your faith. He'll increase your measure and your outcome will be certain in Jesus' name. Okay, uh, and then if you want to give online, the, the website is just therockrevivalcenter.com. That's the website if you want to give after the broadcast, therockrevivalcenter.com. Okay, so I'm going to read this prophetic watch word for today. The Lord said, I am setting up prophetic watches in this hour. 
I am shaking what is shakable so that only unshakable things can remain. I am restructuring the church. That's an important one. He's restructuring the church that has my name and needs my heart. So he's saying that my church needs also my heart. And when our heart is right, it's easy for God to move through us. And when he sees that we can be trusted, he increases the measures that we can be trusted with. He increases the influence. He increases our affluence. He increases our capacity. Some of you are like, well, I don't have the healing anointing that you have. So I can't really do what you've been doing. And the truth is, it, how many people did you pray for? If you don't think you have it, you're not going to try to use it. And if you're not using it, then even the measure you have will be taken from you. That's the scripture. So how do you get more of anything? You've got to give it away. You've got to learn to give it away. If you want to see more people get healed, I suggest you pray for more people. If you want to learn to be good at prophesy, I suggest you begin to prophesy. And, and if you're not sure if you're even hearing God correctly, then I, I, I suggest that you would practice listening for the voice of the Lord and applying what he's saying. And let him bring you on a journey of development and sanctification in the process of pursuing him. And you will be blessed exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Uh, the last thing here is the Lord said, not only am I restructuring the church that has my name and needs my heart, but this now is a global Passover of economic, it's an economic tipping point of paramount importance. The Lord said, I'm ushering in the next level glory in this hour for houses of prayer. I'm bringing clarity to the prophetic movement. My voice will be heard and discerned in this hour. So the, remember the seven spirits of God. If you don't know about the seven spirits of God, go read. It comes out of the, the one spirit, the Holy Spirit. But those seven characteristics are attributes of the Spirit of God. And we need them. The Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit of might. Remember, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord is returning to the body of Christ. We need to reverence God. Reverence God. Saying what He tells us to say. Adding nothing to what He says. And knowing when to stop talking. And knowing when to begin to listen. And begin to listen to the Lord. Begin to listen to the voice of God. And you will hear Him because my sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. My sheep hear my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. But you, you, if you listen to the stranger, it's difficult to listen to God. But if you're listening for God, then the voice of the stranger just sounds like a clanging gong. So listen to the Lord. He's bringing clarity in the prophetic movement. He's restoring the gift of discernment in this hour in the body of Christ for those who choose to discern and rightly divide the word of truth. This new beginning is an opportunity for high praise. There's high praise coming on the body of Christ. We were worshiping the Lord. It was beautiful. But there's coming on the body of Christ a powerful roar like the lion. A roar, a sound that will resound among the nations. People who are sold out, crying out from their hunger, from their desperation for God. i got to have more of you, God. Less of me. I must decrease that you can increase in me. Have your way, God. Let me know what you want. And I say yes before I've even heard your voice. And now he tunes your ears to the tones of heaven. This new beginning is an opportunity for high praise. And high praise will come upon my people at last, he says. Ooh, deliverance is here during this praise. The deliverance of God is going to be returned to the church. I remember uh, Derek Prince and back in the day, uh, Dr. Uh, Wynn Worley, and they were uh, casting out demons. And there's a big portion of the body of Christ are like, well, we're not going to do that here. You know, We don't want people to come in here and see demons and people getting all crazy and laughing on the floor. And I've seen people get on the floor and like a snake. I saw the Lord chopped off the head of the serpent. What's been trying to come, that kundalini spirit coming to the people, the fear of man that's a snare, that fear, that spirit called fear. God's exposing it and expelling it. The witchcraft, the things that are hidden in darkness are being exposed and expelled. That spirit of control that, that fear brings. And the Lord's exposing it. And I saw the sword of the Lord just whoo, clean off, lopping off the head of the serpent. Well, the serpent was trying to lop, up, lop off the head of the, the, the Christians. But you can't remove the head, Christ, from the body, us. They're inseparable. It's impossible to try to remove Christ from the church. It's impossible. Ultimately, it would be a waste of effort and time. And those who are governed by a spirit of Antichrist don't realize that they're actually duped and deceived. Because when 
the Lord comes on the scene, everything gets put in order. And those things that are hidden are laid bare before the one to whom we must give an account. God is watching people during this prophetic watch. God is watching. He's watching and he's waiting for us to cry out so that he can see that we see that we need him. And then he throws the life vest. He throws out the lifeboat for your family. He throws out the lifeline because there's a deadline. He begins to bless and he begins to call all grace forward to abound towards you. All grace to abound towards you. And then finally, this new beginning is an opportunity for high praise that will come upon the people at last. Deliverance is here during this praise and foundational biblical teaching is necessary and will return to my churches, says God, with the miracles. And he didn't discount or exclude miracle signs and wonders because you can't actually please God and be a follower of Christ and want to shut out huge portions of the scripture just because your faith is weak. He's wanting to build up faith so people will begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, bringing the fruit of the Spirit. On allowing there to be a safe place in love and acceptance where we can practice the gifts and where we can begin to bear the fruit of those gifts being in operation. For a big, uh, big portion of the body of Christ has shut down the spiritual gifts has deemed it from the enemy, a lot of the stuff that's happening. Even though, yes, there's some people who are they're practicing and they're not prophesying correctly. Uh, they think they're hearing God and the stranger gave them a little mixture. But we need to learn how to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. we got to stop killing the babies in America. we got to stop killing the babies. The shedding of innocent blood empowers the demonic spirits of Antichrist and the witchcraft. And what we want to do is we want to shut down everything that's not God and begin to bring forth the truth of his word. And his word will not return void. And then this is the very last one, I promise. Balance is being restored. In this hour, balance and the desire for intimacy. And this is the moment for this, intimacy. Don't be from sin consciousness. Instead, be motivated to come to God. Come to me, you who are burdened and weary and heavy laden. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you. We need to pursue God while he can be found. Pursue God while he can be found. My sheep hear my voice and a stranger's voice. To tell you my secrets. To tell you secrets from his heart. So this is the hour for intimacy and the restoration of all that is good. This is, this is when my spirit, says God, shall pour out on the purification of my bride. Here where the Hebrew calendar, if you look in the, you see Purim, really comes out of purify. What is God wanting to do? Purify his bride. Why? Because if his bride is going to carry his name, we better be humble. Humble enough that we can pray. Humble enough that we will yield. Humble enough that we can say, you know what? I don't have it all figured out. Humble enough to recognize that there's people who are really perishing and they need the you the hope of glory. It's not the gospel if you don't speak up. It's not the gospel if you put a mask or a muzzle over your faith. No, no one muzzles an ox and then causes it to go tread the grain. We see the cycle of faith in this hour more than ever, demonstrating our faith, stepping out beyond ourselves, picking up our cross and denying ourselves so we can at last pursue God with our whole heart and not just part of it. Let's pray. Father, we bless this broadcast. Lord, I pray that it would reach every nation, every tribe, every tongue, that what has your heart, we say it will. this message will go out, that the people will be inspired to watch it again and again, that the parts that they needed, that they would receive it. And what the enemy did to come and rob, kill, and destroy from our nations, Lord, we ask that you would use it, all things to work together for good as you deliver life and life abundant. Lord, we thank you. The greatest asset we have is your voice. The greatest thing that we could do is listen to you. And sometimes we got to tune out all the noise and begin to come back to what matters. Personal revelation, personal intimacy, personal pursuit of more of you from a place of hunger. Lord, I thank you for honoring that hunger in your people. I thank you, Lord, that any sick person right now can receive the healing that is there and present, ready for you to land on them. And just say this, if you need healing now from sickness, you can just say, Father, I thank you. You paid for me to be healed. When you 
sent your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him, the Son, Jesus, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, we receive that gift of life now. We receive what you paid for. Even when we take this is my body broken for you. This is the blood of the new covenant. And as often as you think of it, and as often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, help us to lead our families in your ways. Help us out of their bedrooms and to turn off their technology so we can begin to work through the processing of what's happening in the earth, which I believe, God, is the most incredible opportunity that we've ever been presented with. The need for a Savior. The need for systems that are failing, that are built on sand, that are built on flesh, that are built on money, that are built on things that, 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 that are not the right thing to build on. You taught us to build on the rock. The rock of our salvation is you. Thank you, Jesus, for being our life source, for, our, for being our door, for showing us that you're the way, not a way, that you're the truth, so truth is you. And we can receive that truth. And by knowing you, we can be made free. And Lord, I pray that freedom would come upon all who see this video. That you would empower each one to forgive themselves by just saying, I forgive myself. And by forgiving all those who have hurt them. And that Lord, that the failing systems of the world are being shaken because you've allowed all things to work together for good. What the enemy meant for evil, you shall use it for your glory. And we say yes to you. We say yes to believing you and to trusting you and to being people of faith. Lord, join our hearts together for your common purpose and let our lives shine with the truth of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and light his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. God loves you. He's with you. He's for you. How can you lose a battle that's won? Exciting time in all. So thank you so much for watching us here at the Rock Revival Center. Be sure to share the post with your friends. Tag people you think need the message. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just say, Jesus, I need you. I need that life preserver that Nathan talked about. I receive it by faith. Salvation, I receive it by faith. And I ask you, Lord, to be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Love you guys.